Hi, I'm Amy Long with Red Carpet Report at the Saban Theater in Beverly Hills for the premiere of Nat Geo's Saints and Strangers. Good, Such you? a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. You're not the first to say that. It's like the first chilly night of LA I've experienced. Chilly? I just left eight, eight inches of snow back home. This is nothing. I'm not jealous. <laughs> no, you're right. This is nothing. Yeah, yeah, this is nothing. So home being northern New Mexico. Northern, okay, I was gonna say New Mexico doesn't get that cold, but not the part that I drove through. Yeah, no, I'm uh, 8,500 feet up in the mountains, so oh, wow. yeah, I'm looking at snow peaks all around me. That's my backyard. Oh, but that's beautiful. Uh, so this is this is yeah. Your hands are like ice cold and are toasty. Yeah. yeah. Warm me up. <laughs> I actually have know about you because of American Indian Dance Theater. That far back. Wow. So you got any dance moves for me? No, he's a dancer now. You didn't ask you for any? I got lousy knees now. <laughs> I don't hold up anymore. Too much dancing. Yeah, too much dancing. Too much running. <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, yeah, Apocalypse was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. It was just so much running, 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day running, that's some awesome shape you were in. Yeah, at 50. <laughs> yeah, Not bad. How many miles do you think you got in? Oh, good God, too many to count. <laughs> Did it make you run at all for saints and strangers? No, I had a stick that I leaned on, and I did all my acting on a stick, so age appropriate, I guess. Your costume is fantastic in this. Pretty cool look at that. What was your favorite part of it? Anything they let you take home? No, but I, I think the most important thing that I fought for was towards the end. Uh, it's historically part of the fact that Misasu was given a red coat from the British, and it was kind of overlooked, and at one point I said, I think we need that red coat for that last image of that Thanksgiving to show that we have crossed over now. So uh, I didn't ask for the jacket. I should have. It was a cool jacket. Cool red military, you know, all wool. <laughs> that, that's, I would have stolen it from you. <laughs> you Just for a moment, though. Then you could have had it back. So be, you actually already know so very much about um, all of the, the history. So, But was there anything in doing this project that you learned further? I think, yeah, I think I learned about the, the division between all the pilgrims. I think uh, it's one of the things I didn't pay attention to, but, but I don't think I was ever taught that they were separatists and these strangers. So that was new for me, and to see that within their own group that they had a lot of conflict. And uh, that was good to see because then it made it easy to mirror that same sentiment amongst all the native people. We had the same differences and the same conflict going on. Yeah. And that, that's very important to know. It would have been probably strangers didn't realize that was going on at the time either, right? I think like any time, uh, when you're part of a group that you identify with, you don't realize how important it is until years later, for instance. I mean, you, know, you think about you know something silly, but the hippie movement of the 60s. Look how it impacted America so much today. And I think that's one of the things, too, the, the strangers... Uh, amongst the pilgrims were, were not only just outcasts from those people, but talk about survivors to live within a very rigid society and all they wanted was more freedom, it just didn't have anything to do with religion. So uh, it was good. And the betrayal by the strangers is amazing. Yeah, you'll see that. I, everybody feels like they already know this story, but to watch it unfold, especially done by National Geographic, is going to be in, in, insane. Yeah, I think National Geographic is just one of those great new companies making projects that just bring such quality and integrity to the work. And uh, there'll be more. And I think because young people these days don't read that much and don't care about history, it'll be a great way for them to be able to look at history, see it in a way, and maybe then learn a little bit something about this country. Great bridge. Yeah. Great bridge. One, one more. Uh, so around your Thanksgiving table in New Hampshire, besides the people that are already invited, who would you wish it could be there? Anybody. Anyone. Everyone's welcome? Uh, no, you're asking me. Anybody. I can bring anybody. Anyone. Well, I think definitely Lady Gaga would have to be there. I'm such a huge fan, and I'm, I'm saying that only because, again, it's one of those things that until you spend the time to know about somebody, you have no idea. And uh, I just think she's a brilliant artist, but I would probably invite nothing but mad artists to my group, and you know, and we would just have fun talking about life and art. One heck of a conversation. Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, uh, Van Gogh, he wouldn't be there. He'd be too much of a depressive. 
It would have to be somebody like Matisse, who's probably a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you've already committed to Lady Gaga. You only got one chair. <laughs> oh, okay, good. She'll speak for everybody. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Get those hands warm. All right. Thanks for watching. If you liked this interview, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos. And in the comment box below, tell me some of your Thanksgiving traditions. I like turkey and cranberry sauce and food. I eat three times. My tradition is I eat three times. Tis all.